As part of setting up my new workshop, I just picked up this 16 inch scroll saw from Ryobi. I'm going to set it up and uh, let you know what I think about it. Stick with us. Hi and welcome to the Handyverse where we approach home ownership mindfully. We're still uh, setting up the new workshop and I'm here with another new tool. Um, we're getting through these, there won't be too many more of these I promise, but uh, this one I'm pretty excited about. I haven't done a lot with a scroll saw, but I did pick up this one here um, to do to help a lot with some of the uh, projects that we're working on. Sometimes we need a bit finer cuts. Well, this would be a lot finer cuts than the table saw or miter saw, but um, I'm looking forward to playing around with it and using it to um, make our designs a little bit more interesting. So with this, uh, I'm starting out with a scroll saw, so I wasn't looking for top of the line. I really was just looking for a decent sized scroll saw that was on sale. And I ended up with this Ryobi one. Um, if, it, uh, if it's something that I do a lot of, maybe I'll look at upgrading down the road, or maybe this will be perfectly fine. I don't really have any clue. Didn't do a lot of research before this, but uh, we're gonna pop it open now, take a look at it, and uh, start to figure things out. Instructions, we'll take a peek at these, see what's in them. Also a couple tools in the box, uh, don't miss those. So not much uh, really to do here, I don't think. Uh, this is for the blower, um, that needs to be attached. Power cord, straight forward. This bag, I don't know what the hex driver's for. I guess we'll find out soon enough. And there's an extra blade in there as well. Looks like it's a thinner blade than what's uh, installed in the unit. So I'm just going to turn this knob here, which looks like it's for keeping the table locked in place. Doesn't seem to be a stop. At 90. So I need to come underneath here. And we'll set that to zero. Just eyeballing it. And I'll grab a square and check to make sure that it's square. Just raise this out of the way. Use my combination square here. If you look at it, I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but it's not quite at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna do uh, a little bit of adjustment on that. So it's close, but it's not perfect. I think that's pretty good. Really for assembly, there's just setting that blade perpendicular and then attaching this hose here to the bellows. It should press on there, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna lower this again. Plug it in.
So pretty neat. Um, one of the things I might look into getting is a foot switch to go with this, but uh, I'm going to uh, take a test piece now and just do a couple of cuts on it just to make sure that the blade is perpendicular. I'll show you how I do that. And then just check to make sure those are parallel. And if those are parallel, there's a good chance that you have your blade perpendicular to the to the tabletop. And that looks uh, pretty good to me. All right, before we get started, uh, I'm just gonna adjust a couple of things. I wanna adjust the output of the blower here. So I'm going to loosen this screw. Just turn this in a little bit. Make sure it's oriented down towards the work. That's good there now. Right now we're gonna remove the blade. Um, I wanna put the thinner blade on because the, the piece that we're gonna cut has some finer work to do. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is release the tension on the blade. Actually, if you come up here for a sec, you can hear it's got some tension on it there now. You're gonna loosen this piece. It's got more play in it. And now, to take this out, you want to reach underneath and push up on the, this here. You can remove your throat plate. You're going to loosen this here. And with that, you're going to pull up on the blade, push down, and it releases. It comes out in the bottom piece about as well. So you can see those pins, those are what you have to disengage from this here piece. So the replacement blade doesn't actually have those pins, so I'm just going to put them in and clamp it using these and and tightening up uh, the, the screws to fit it in place. So I'm going to start by putting it down through and into the Oh, <laughs> I almost made a mistake there. You want the blades uh, pointed out towards you and the teeth pointed down. blade on again make sure the teeth are pointed down and towards you and you want to loop it underneath the uh, bottom and then push this arm down so it, it loops on both of those and then tighten those up and replace your throat plate. Throat plate. Then you want to, uh, this is loose, so you want to increase your tension. Okay, my daughter started uh, getting into some wood carving and she needs a, she wants to try carving out this fish and it needs to be cut out on a scroll saw first to make it easier to whittle. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. I got a piece of scrap wood here to, to fit the pattern. And I'll make sure that it's covering the whole thing. And I'm just going to trim up the paper first. Now, I'm gonna take my block 
and put some painter's tape on the block. This should help reduce the cleanup after the fact. Now we're just gonna take the pattern and glue some spray adhesive on the back. I'm just using some LePage multi-purpose spray adhesive. Gonna let that sit for a minute until it gets tacky. Okay, one thing I want to adjust before I start this is the position of these. Uh, Guards. I'm just going to loosen this and it has a slot so I'm going to slide it over, center it more on the blade. And I'm just going to make sure that it's level. Your piece should move freely underneath it. It does. So let's plug it in and start. So that's how the first piece turned out. I probably should have picked something a little bit simpler maybe for my first go at it, but uh, but it did turn out pretty well. And um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Uh, it's kind of satisfying uh, to see something come out like that. Um, the saw itself, um, it, uh, it seemed to work fine. I had no issues. It kept uh, pretty clear uh, with the air coming down here to uh, keep the dust away, so I didn't really have much of a problem with that. Um, I could see why people put a foot switch on, so if you come underneath, the, the power switch is here, and I found myself turning this off and on quite a bit, um, where it'd be a lot simpler with a foot switch, so I may pick one up. You can get them that just uh, plug into the main power, and you use that to run the saw instead. Uh, now I'm gonna try pulling off the uh, the pattern and uh, hopefully that comes off. Here we got a nice little fish. Uh, it's up to her to make it look good now. Um, it's gonna need some sanding but uh, this is uh, smoother cuts than I was anticipating on the scroll saw. And you can see there's, um, you know, obviously it needs some cleanup with sanding and, and maybe some filing, but overall it's, uh, it's pretty clean. There you have it. Uh, this is the Ryobi 16 inch scroll saw. 
Uh, seems like a great little starter saw. Um, hopefully it uh, keeps up, but I'll, I'll, as I do more projects, I'll, I'll keep you up to date on what I think of it. But uh, I wouldn't hesitate to, to purchase this as, a, as somebody starting out, um, which I am. Um, but uh, that's my thoughts on it. So if you like this, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.